Hello, fantastic people. It's Carla, and I am back again in my kitchen today for a very special equipment focused episode. People ask me all the time, what are the essential set of pots and pans that every home cook should have? Some of the pots and pans that I have are the same ones that I've been cooking with since my very first apartment. And I am here to tell you that it is not the quantity of the pans that you have, it is the quality. Having the right quality pans at home will make you a better cook, period, end of discussion. And having crappy pans will make you feel like you can't cook and it's not you, it's the pans. Before I get into today's episode, I wanted to give a special shout out to our sponsor, Goldilocks. Goldilocks stainless steel pans are a really great product offered at a truly unbelievable price. I will get into all of the details in the actual episode, but Thank you so much Goldilocks for supporting us and uh, yeah, let's go turn on the heat. I'm going to start with the most budget friendly and completely indestructible, which is cast iron. So cast iron is a mix of carbon and iron and the material is actually poured in its like molten state into a mold and cast in that before being unmolded. Some of the newer ones that are made like you know, in the past 40 years, tend to have a more pebbly texture. It's totally fine, it will smooth out over time, but if you find a vintage pan, maybe at a flea market, you'll notice it has a very smooth and shiny surface, and that's because in the olden days, they would refine those pans to give them a smoother surface. Modern day pans are already pre-seasoned. You do not have to season this pan, it's coming out of the box, RTG. So. The Lodge 10 inch is gonna set you back about $25, less than 30 bucks. This is an amazing pan. It can go from the surface to the oven. You can bring it to a campfire and it's gonna last you forever. The thing that everybody always says about cast iron is like it's an amazing heat conductor and it's an amazing retainer of heat. It actually isn't a great heat conductor. It's a very dense material and it takes a long time to heat up. So I think this is a little bit of a myth. People don't realize you really do have to preheat your cast iron pan before you put something in it because it's thick, it's dense, like that heat has to penetrate. But once it's hot, it's gonna stay really hot, which makes it excellent for browning big pieces of meat for maintaining the temperature for deep frying or for shallow frying. I love it for making burgers. You're gonna get a great crusty sear, but they are heavy. This part of the pan is called the helper handle, and that's there because like you really, it is hard to pick it up with one hand, and this isn't the pan that you would choose to try to saute something or toss because it's just unwieldy. The other cast iron in this category is this pan, which I really, really love. This is called carbon steel or black steel. If you Google either one of those terms, they're gonna come up for you and you can figure out where to buy them. They have a little bit less carbon than what you'll find in a cast iron pan. And the advantage of that is that they can actually be rolled out much thinner. These are sheeted, they are shaped, they're thinner, they're lighter, but they have all the same other heat conducting and heat retaining properties. The handle on this one is going to be welded as opposed to this one where it's all cast in one piece. I love these for smaller things like doing crisp little patties. I love to heat up pita bread in these. I love to make a single grilled cheese for me and only me in this pan, but they're really awesome. And because they're lightweight, you might find yourself pulling them down a little more often than this guy. Small word of caution at the end, there are some like boutique new cast iron makers on the market. The pans are awesome, but you will see that they are like six, seven, eight times the price of a lodge. They're lovely, I own some of them, but it's a little bit like buying a Chanel sneaker when your Converse is gonna get you um, down the road on the same walk. It's great if you're into it, they're gonna do the same thing. The thing about cast iron I get is tons and tons of questions, but Carla, they're so hard to clean. Carla, they rust. Honestly, all you need most of the time is water and a scrubby brush. This like little bristly thing to get in there. If something is stuck, you can let it sit in water for like 20 minutes. It's gonna release. If you need to, you can totally use soap. That's also a myth. It will be 100% fine. The only thing that's really important is making sure the pan is dry before you put it away. The way my mom does it and the way that I've always done it is by putting it on the stovetop over medium flame until 
all the water evaporates and the pan is dry, let it cool down and then put it away. That's how you avoid rust. It's really as simple as that. You don't have to stress. Benefits of this pan, amazing, workhorse, indestructible, easy to clean, will last you a hundred million years and can also go with you on um, any covered wagon adventures that you need to do. We don't know what the future is gonna bring. We might all be in covered wagons. <laughs> this is the pan you wanna bring. Stainless steel. This is a very, very popular material for very, very good reason. Amazing heat conductivity. They heat up really fast. They look great. They're lightweight. This is why stainless steel is like such a basic, such an essential in every kitchen. That said, there is a lot of crap in this category. You're gonna find like an insane variance in prices, which can be really confusing and also act as a barrier. On the high end, that's gonna be a reason why beginning cooks are not gonna invest in that cookware. On the low end, you might think it's a bargain, but actually get the pan home and realize it's super light and flimsy and things are scorching in it and you're gonna think that you were cooking wrong when actually it's that pan, that pan is never gonna pay off for you. I've been using these Goldilocks pans for a while now and they have the attributes that you wanna look for when you're shopping for a pan. Okay, first of all, it should have a nice weight to it. If it feels too light for its size, that means that these layers of stainless steel are incredibly thin. You're gonna get burning, you're gonna get scorching, even when you're over low heat and you're gonna end up throwing this pan away. I always look for riveted handles, which means the handle's never gonna break off. So you wanna see that that rivet on the inside of the pan extends all the way to the outside. That means that this handle, which is gonna get a lot of use and play over time, is not gonna break off. Also make sure that the material on the handle is not some different material that can't go into the oven. Sometimes it'll have a stainless steel body, but have like a weird rubberized handle that then you lose the advantage of being able to go from stovetop to oven, which is another really great thing about stainless steel. The other thing you wanna look for is a tri-ply construction, which means that there's two sheets of stainless steel with a sheet of aluminum in between. I never have bothered with the ones that are like copper core or five ply. I think it's a lot of bells and whistles to get you to spend money that you don't need to be spending. So the Goldilocks pans, I definitely recommend. They're really high quality at a really great price. And to find out more about the Goldilocks pans, just check out the link in the video description. The skillets I'm gonna use for sauteing things. You can definitely use them for stir fries if you don't own a wok. They are big enough to brown off something like a pork loin or chicken thighs. So if you heat your pan up properly and you have the right amount of fat or oil in your pan, these are as nonstick as anything out there. Everybody needs a tall pot for boiling pasta, for steaming, for simmering, for doing your grains, for doing your beans, all of those very important things. And then saucepans with lids. Small usually means one to two quarts. Medium in a recipe is gonna be three to four. You know, the little one is really great for warming up milk. Cosmo really loves to make hot cocoa in this one in particular. So yeah, you'll find lots of reasons to have both sizes. Another really great thing about stainless is that it can be shaped with these beautiful curves. So look for a nice curved edge instead of a straight wall meeting the floor of the pan. That means you'll be able to get in there with your spoon and stir and really get into the nooks and crannies. Your whisk will be able to go around. This curved edge means if you're pouring liquids, it's gonna come out really nicely. And same deal on the skillet. This rounded side means when you go to toss, there's actually like a beautiful little ski slope for things to toss and flip over. And if you're pouring your pan sauce out from the side of the pan, this rounded edge means it's not just gonna splatter all over the place. Stainless steel is gonna be a great fit for any kitchen. They can work on gas, they can work on electric, they can also work on induction, which apparently we're all gonna be cooking on induction in the future. So make sure you have a pan that works for that. See you later, stainless. It's time for the next material. 
All right, I also very strongly recommend you have an enameled cast iron Dutch oven. You can see I have like a little bit of an obsession with my Dutch ovens. These are the pans that you're gonna use constantly all the time for braises, for stews, for your ragouts, for building pasta sauces. You can bake bread in these. Because they're cast iron and enamel, they also will last forever and ever and ever. If your pot does chip, this is my mom's cruset from the 70s. What's underneath is cast iron. So even if you do get a little surface nick in the enamel, your cooking surface is totally good to go. The one that I recommend you get if you're only having one is something in the six to eight quart range. As with stainless steel though, the prices can get insane. This one is a stove pan. I really love it. It's very expensive. It's heirloom quality, but it has a lot of the things that you're gonna wanna look for when you go shopping. You want a lid that fits really tightly and preferably overhangs. The ones that have these little dimples or ridges on the underside as steam builds up in the pan coming off of whatever you're cooking, it builds on the underside of the pan and then it will drip off these little dimples and kind of make this like even rain shower situation happening. You also wanna make sure that the handles are big enough and like comfortable enough that you can pull something like this out of a hot oven Maybe you're using mitts. Maybe you have like a kitchen towel in there. You need to be able to like get a good hold on it. And then just make sure that it's cast iron in the center. You wanna feel that weight of the cast iron. It's gonna give you all of the same benefits, but the lid is gonna give you a lot more options of things that you can do. We love our Dutch ovens. Don't dilly dally little Dutch ovens. I've got one more pan to show you. All right, no shade, but nonstick is the least important part of my collection. The only thing I really use these for is either scrambled eggs or a rolled omelet. My kids really like them for heating up leftovers because they're easy, but these pans are actually not built to last you forever. All of them scratch, eventually degrade. This is a pan that you're gonna have to replace. But also if you're using your cast iron, your carbon steel and the stainless steel properly, all of those pans can be non-stick and they're gonna last you forever and ever and ever. I would definitely say to all of the beginner cooks out there, please do not be seduced by those all-in-one non-stick sets. You're gonna end up replacing them. They're not as versatile as you think they are and you could do a lot better with a mix of the cast iron and stainless steel pans that I already talked about. Not today, non-stick. We're out of here. Let's recap, because I went over a lot of stuff. Again, stainless steel, this is your everyday, lightweight, super hot, super versatile pan. You're simmering in the big guy, you're sauteing, you are searing, you've gotta have this pan. Cast iron, this is the workhorse, the heavy duty, the high heat conductivity, high heat retention. You're frying your chicken in it. We're doing latkes. It's going stove to oven. It's coming to the camp out with you. Enameled cast iron, Dutch oven, soups, stews, braises. You're baking your sourdough in it. You build your pasta sauce and bring all of that together. Really important. You're gonna use it all the time. And then finally, non-stick. I would put this in the optional category. So that is again my recommendation to you no matter what level cook you are at every budget. I hope that we covered sizes, materials, the uses. I really do think that this is the right mix for any kitchen. And uh, the only thing you have to do now is go pick out a recipe. <laughs> May I recommend? I have a million. <laughs>